Welcome to Apple Insider, everybody. It is Andrew here. We've been taking a good look at HomeKit and talking about what we would like to see in Apple's latest new release. And with WWDC just around the corner, we thought it'd be a great time to take a look at our wish list of features that we want to see in iOS 12, Mac OS 10, 14, TV OS 12, and Watch OS 5. So let's go through our list of things that we want to see added to Apple's smart home platform, starting with video recording. See, HomeKit cameras at the moment, they're really great, but you have to really rely on the third-party app to get a lot of the functionality. Inside of HomeKit, there's simply no recording option. It would make a whole lot of sense to be able to record things and store them directly into iCloud. In fact, it would be a great get for Apple because it's another reason for people to upgrade their iCloud storage. Plenty of third-party cameras, whether it's the August Cam, the Netatmo cameras, Logitech Circle 2, Canary, all of them have options to record it happens natively in those third-party apps. It would be great to see that same option inside of iCloud, and you're not having to buy a bunch of third-party memberships for the same thing. Now, in a similar vein, we would also love to see a privacy mode, so that way when you're home, your cameras aren't always on. There could be a night mode where they are on and recording during the nights when you're trying to sleep, but you still want to kind of know what happens. But other than that, there's no way to kind of have that privacy. When you're home and that camera's in different rooms in your house, anyone else who has access to your home kit, any member of your family can log in and see what's happening in those rooms. One of the biggest accessories that is kind of absent from HomeKit is cars. There are several things that you could possibly do with HomeKit with your car. For instance, starting or stopping the engine to kind of preheat or pre-cool your vehicle, unlocking or locking the doors, whether you just want to be able to do it ahead of time or unlock it or lock it for somebody else. It could even tap into the temperature controls for outside and the heating and cooling for the inside of your car. You can have a scene in the morning that automatically turns on your car before work on weekdays and depending on the temperature could turn on the AC or the heat. A lot of this functionality is already there. It's in third-party apps like Ford Pass or Ford Vehicles. Here you can actually start top your car. You can see how much gas is in there. Lock and unlock it and you can even create schedules so it can turn on and off on certain days like before work in the morning and as you go to leave work in the evenings. Most of these accessory types are already in HomeKit as well like locks. Like if you trust HomeKit to lock and unlock your front door, why would you not trust HomeKit to unlock or lock your vehicle? Same thing with temperature sensors and AC and heat. All of those are already in HomeKit, so why not just take advantage of them for a vehicle? As far as on Ford side of things, they already allow this functionality with Alexa. So if you can do it Alexa, it would be a no-brainer for them to offer similar functionality through HomeKit. Obviously, security is always going to be a concern, but if you're trusting it for your house, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to trust it for your car. Another big accessory type that is pretty much missing from HomeKit is appliances. And I don't mean fans, but other things like ovens and stoves. If I want to ask Siri to preheat my oven to a certain temperature, right now, I can't do that. I have to either use another one, like, again, Amazon Alexa or other smart home services. I also want to get notifications. Maybe I want to get notified when my washer or dryer is done, when my dishwasher is finished, or when my oven has actually preheated. Apple really needs to jump on this sooner rather than later. People don't exactly buy ovens and washers and dryers and dishwashers fairly often. So if people are buying them in any of this time right now, they're losing out on that functionality when or if it ever comes to market. I could also see this functionality being useful for smaller appliances, like a Juul or a Nova sous vide machine, or maybe like a crock pot. Things like crock pots and coffee makers are already actually supported by other assistants, so it just makes sense they tie that all into HomeKit at the same time. Another feature that I've been able to do for quite some time, but not with HomeKit, has been able to control my smart pet feeders. There are quite a lot of smart pet feeders out there, but they're becoming more popular. They're really handy, especially if you travel a lot. You can go ahead and tap in and feed your cat, or if you're going to be late, you can always tap in and feed your dog. It just makes it really easy to feed your animals if you happen not to make it for a scheduled time. But that's not something that HomeKit can do right now, even though it is something that you can do with Amazon Alexa. One of the biggest names in the smart pet feeders is the petnet.io feeder. It allows you to really easily keep track of your animal, the food, reorder, all that kind of stuff. And it again works with Amazon Alexa. I can just ask Alexa to feed the animal. It's not that hard to feed the animal, but in random situations, whether you're traveling, you're not going to be there for a day or two, and you want to make sure your cat is taken care of, they can definitely be really handy. Aside from just being able to feed your pet, they can also be useful in letting you know when you're running low on food. These all have sensors in the container that lets you know how much food is in there. So you could get a notification from HomeKit saying, hey, warning, your food is going low, and you know to order some more. 
Music control is something we may or may not be getting when AirPlay 2 finally launches. It's currently in beta in iOS 11.4 and is really something we see baked out a little bit more. You see AirPlay 2 supported speakers can be added into HomeKit. They will show in the Home app and can be assigned to a room. Currently, that's kind of limited to things like the Apple TV, but it'll eventually go to include third-party speakers like the Libertone Zip or Apple's own HomePod. Right now, you can't do anything with it, though. Even in the beta form, you can simply view those speakers in the Home app, and you can tap on them to play or pause. Eventually, we want to see this built out more, where you can actually include music and audio in scenes. That way, when you create a scene, say, movie time, it'll automatically go ahead and pause the other speakers downstairs, as well as turn on your Apple TV in the living room. You could create a party scene, where it automatically turns your lights to different colors and turns on your party mix. Or you could set a morning scene. You tap wake up in the morning, turns on your lights, turns on your shower using HomeKit faucet, sets the lights in the bathroom to the right light, and plays a nice energetic morning playlist to get you going for the day. Realistically, there are endless possibilities when music is opened to being included in scenes and automations. Timers is our next request on the list, and I'm not talking about just the ability for the HomePod to set multiple timers, which it can still not do. I'm talking for timers for accessories. I want to be able to ask Siri to turn on the lights for 20 minutes and have them automatically turn off. I want to have them kind of random and being able to do them with Siri and not have to pre-program them into the scenes with this new turn off functionality. It's basically like a sleep timer. I want to ask, hey Siri, turn off the ceiling fan in 20 minutes. Instead of creating a scene for each interval of time, I just want to be able to ask Siri on the fly to include that countdown in the command. It would be extremely handy and basically make a lot of your stuff work as a sleep timer. When Siri came to the Mac, it was kind of missing one thing, one rather big thing, and that is HomeKit support. You can do almost everything else on your Mac with Siri, except for control your HomeKit accessories. If I ask her to turn off or on my living room lights, she'll basically laugh at me. There is a whole list of things that you can do. Ask about the weather. You can find things in Finder, turn off settings, all these things, but you can't control HomeKit. And it seems like a really big omission. So hopefully Apple clears that up with the next update to macOS, macOS 10.14. A lot of companies have been pledging HomeKit support to their accessories. And unfortunately, a lot of them still haven't come to fruition. We've seen things from Netatmo, from Canary, from Ring, all been announced months or years ago. And still, they're still not actually coming to fruition. Especially when it comes to camera, there's been a lot of companies announcing camera support and just never really following through. Apple needs to work with these companies to get this stuff out faster. If they're going to promise it years ago, then they need to start following through. Apple itself has its own habit of announcing things far too early and never quite getting around to releasing them. Something else that's been available on rival platforms for quite a while is Intercom. Imagine being able to drop into any room in your house that you happen to have something like a HomeKit camera and talk to whoever's in the room, ask a question, not having to rely on text and waiting for responses. This is something that's basically already available now if you have a HomeKit camera. I was actually going to the grocery store very recently and I needed to ask my girlfriend a question and she wasn't answering her phone. So how did I get an answer? I opened up the Home app, opened up the camera in the kitchen, tapped on the microphone, started up some two-way audio, and just straight up asked her through the camera. It would be far easier if this was an actual feature and not just kind of a silly workaround. I don't want to open up a video stream if I want to go ahead and talk to her. I just want to open an audio stream right into that room and being able to converse with whoever's there. It could also be extremely useful for things like the HomePod or maybe in the future, fingers crossed, a HomePod mini where you can actually have multiple HomePod audio sources or AirPlay 2 speakers throughout your home. Since it's HomeKit, it could also work with third party ones. Other people could make cheaper, more affordable HomeKit intercoms and speakers to put around. If people want to use HomeKit as somewhat of a home security system, we're going to need a lot more notifications. There's a lot that can really be done here, but notifications have kind of been a little bit of a underlooked feature. You can still get things like motion notifications for a camera or just motion cam motion sensors in general. Go in motion sensor, tap on status notifications. You can allow them. You can have them only happen during certain times. And you could even have them with uh, people parameters, like only get notified when no one's home, because in that case, there should be no motion happening in your house. But I don't want just motion notifications. I want a lot of other notifications too. And not just ones for like the smoke detectors. I want some maybe on when a door has not been closed. If a door has been opened and left open, I want to know that. I could put it on my refrigerator if I wanted to. You could also do this for things like temperature and humidity. 
Maybe if the temperature in a nursery has gotten too high or too low, that could be something that a parent would want to know about. And those should be things that we should be able to set up and configure within HomeKit. There are tons of different sensors in HomeKit. Apple's made a lot of them available, but they just need an interface for taking any of those and being able to create your own custom notifications based on kind of like an if formula. If this happens or this happens, then send me a notification that that is what's going on. Now, since we're looking at kind of granular notifications, how about we look at granular home access? Like I don't want to just be able to give carte blanche access to everyone who has access to my home. Maybe I want to go for some time and I want to give someone else access to my home, but I just want them to be able to kind of open the front door and feed my pets and that's about it. I don't want them touching my thermostat or unlocking other doors in the house or doing any of these other things or disabling cameras. I want all of that to only work for certain people. Home access could be gated. It could be relegated by the different times of day. So maybe someone has access to your home only during a certain window. It could be during certain days of the week. And in fact, a lot of that functionality is already there in third-party apps. Take August, for example. They have a HomeKit lock. Works great. I can see activity that's going on and I can actually see the different guests that I have. And you can differentiate between owners who have full access and guests that have limited access. Is it always, is it reoccurring or is it temporary? So it could be great for rentals. Have someone access to your home for only this amount of period and then it automatically stops. It also limits their other features. This could go along with usage logs, being able to see who actually performed different operations. Could be extremely useful for car support or for other locks. I want to know who unlocked my door when they unlocked it. And did they use a key or did they use the app? Things like that could be very useful to know, especially if you're renting your place. If we jump back and look at Canary, they also keep their own activity logs. So you can actually see what motion was detected in which room, a little snapshot of that motion that was created, and when people left and arrived at your home. You can see Faith left in the morning, Andrew left, Andrew came home. All those things are being tracked. The last thing I would want to mention, and this is a long shot, and that's an IR blaster supporter, or even RF, being able to control anything that could use a remote, whether it's a TV, a kettle, or a fan, all that could be all controlled through an IR blaster. So these are our ideas for what we want to see in HomeKit, but what about you guys? Make sure you guys let us know all of your great thoughts and which one of these is your favorite that you most want to see. Let us know for sure down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.